How was that? Uh, how was that auction you went to? I didn't go. They canceled it. Canceled it. Oh man. What happened? Someone bought it, or it just blew up? You know, it's a sheriff sale, and I guess they came up with the money at the last minute. So, w what's like a sheriff sale, and how's that different? It means there's an attachment on their house for money they owe, and the sheriff can sell it to pay off the creditor. In that case, I didn't think it was going to happen because I looked at what they paid. They paid cash for the house like seven years ago. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, was doubtful they're going to let the house go. And then, what's you say? You're showing a warehouse, also, right? You said you were going to show a warehouse. Yeah, I have a listing on Bel Air Road. It's still the, uh, the spot you're looking to try to set up with mental health people, right? The government decided this seems like they stepped it up and they made a lot of money available to the operators of mental health facilities. I constantly get calls from people wanting to, to lease or buy for mental health. Hmm. So that's the new, new game in town. My name is Nicholas Piscatelli. I am a commercial real estate broker in Maryland. I have been a residential real estate broker for most of my days. And the last seven years, I decided to switch over to commercial because I had been investing in commercial properties and I knew all about them. I arrived here from the state of Connecticut. When I first came here to go to school, the only thing I had was my car. And I sold the car even though I loved it. It was a 1968 Plymouth Barracuda. Wow. It was the car of my dreams. But I sacrificed it to get the equity out to buy my first property. And then from there, the next property, I borrowed money on my MasterCard for the down payment and just started using the rents from those properties to purchase the next one and the next one. I didn't know anything about real estate, but I just started buying property. And by the time I was 23, I had five apartment buildings. So from there, I decided to become a real estate agent and started uh, working in an area called Bolton Hill and got a lot of interested people involved because as I was renovating properties, I would use my property to show them through and to teach them how to renovate and therefore brought a lot of people into the community and got it started. From there, I just ended up in a lot of different areas of of real estate, I purchased a apartment building that went to tax sale. And I found out that they were charging 18% interest. So I said, this is a pretty good business. Let me get into this. And I, next year I bought 12 properties at, at the tax sale. I ended up with two of them, got the deeds to two of them. And then I kept growing it, started getting friends involved, and I brought it up to 50,000, and then 250,000, and then ultimately I teamed up with a group in Florida, and we ended up at 25 million dollars, and we were the biggest buyers in the in the city of Baltimore and in all of the counties in Maryland. But what I want to talk about really is how Baltimore today is probably has the best opportunities that I've seen in all the years that I've been here. And the reason is that I see all these developers coming to Baltimore from New York, New Jersey, California, and they're investing here and they're doing big projects. Um, a group came in, CFG Bank, and bought the, uh, the Baltimore Arena. They spent $30 million to renovate it. Then there were two 
Twin Tower Hotels in downtown Baltimore. That this group from California came in, converted it to 718 studio apartments. And these properties have been kind of languishing for 20 years. And now all of a sudden they're picking up steam. There's a lot of activity. The Baltimore uh, Harbor Place that had been developed 20 years ago had been languishing for the last few years. A local investor bought that and he's turning that around. Penn Station is now being developed into, uh, they're renovating the property, they're adding a hotel, they're adding a high-speed rail from Baltimore to DC. And that's going to turn Baltimore around because when people from DC can commute here in 15 minutes or less, they, they opt to purchase property here than in a suburb of DC because they could buy it for half the price. So there, there's also the uh, Under Armour guy, Kevin Plank. He's developing what's now was Port Covington, it's now Baltimore Peninsula. And there's all kinds of mixed use development going there. There are office buildings, there are apartment buildings, businesses. In fact, he's locating his world headquarters there as well. With all these projects that are happening right now in Baltimore, I just think this is a great opportunity for investors to come in and start buying. I have never seen this much activity. Sacrifices have to be made in order to make it, basically. Yeah, that was a big sacrifice. I had to take the bus around Baltimore. <laughs> is it worse than it is today, or? <laughs> it's about the same. About the same. You can do it if, you're, you know, if you've got the, uh, the ability to look for the properties, the distressed properties that you can turn around, get good financing on them. Anybody can do it. You have to know neighborhoods and you really want to buy in a good neighborhood or a neighborhood that's up and coming. Mm. A lot of uh, opportunities are on the fringe of good neighborhoods. You can kind of attach to a strong neighborhood and then uh, those neighborhoods come around eventually. So you don't want to buy too far out mm. of what what uh, the developers or the homeowners are doing. You first have to start out with a property, stabilize that, then move on to the next property. You've got to uh, really understand how real estate works, like how to, how to acquire it, what financing, then how to renovate it if you want to resell it or even if you want to hold it as an investment. Once you get started, then you can move on to... Uh... For instance, I bought an 11-unit uh, apartment building in Bolton Hill, which is a good, strong neighborhood. And I decided to convert it to condominiums. I had never done that before. But I went out and found a real estate attorney that knew how to draw up the bylaws and uh, hire a surveyor so they could map out the units, the size and so forth because you have to describe exactly what you're selling. Then of course you try to convert some of the tenants that are in there as to buyers. So that's one facet of real estate that could be very lucrative, converting apartments to condominiums which I think will be more prevalent because a lot of office buildings are converted to, a, to apartments right now. We're gonna have a flood of apartments. At some point, they would be primed to convert to condominiums. I've seen that happen a couple of times over the years. See that in a lot of uh, up-and-coming real estate agents, where they uh, 
or people getting into real estate that they buy the wrong properties or they're not strategizing where to yeah, buy? Yeah, buying the wrong area. Mm -hmm. They don't know enough about uh, landlord-tenant relations, for instance. So they'll get into a property with tenants and then the tenants aren't paying the rent and they don't really know how to handle that. That's, that's a tough lesson that I had to learn, you know, many times. <laughs> Oh, mistakes I have had to, to be made. chase tenants around to get the money. I'd go collecting it at, at the apartment, which I, after years of doing that, I'm like, well, I'm crazy. What am I doing? Just send them a notice. <laughs> <laughs> Take advantage of the laws that are on the books. The biggest property I ever sold was a an office building that I bought for $2 million and I flipped it for close to $3 million. And that happened because the state had occupied this property downtown and they were, they were vacating it. The owner was living in New York. He was a billionaire. He didn't really know Baltimore too much. He just happened to have a couple properties here. So I went up and met with him. He was tough. And what he said to me is, I'll sell you this property, you need to put 100000 down as hard money. Well, hard money means that if you default in any way, he keeps it. As opposed to most people when they buy an, an apartment building or any property, they put up a deposit that's refundable if they don't go through with the deal. Because you can get out of a purchase if you have a study period for say 30 days or 40 days to give you time to study it. And during that time if you find something you don't like you can walk away. You get your money back. He wasn't giving me that option. But it was such a great deal I decided to risk the money. And then I had to come up with another 100000 later on. They were both non-refundable. Non but, you know, at the end of the day, it was worth the risk. Mm. And now that's 202 units that was converted to the guy I sold it to. It was a big property. It was the Standard Oil Building, which was the Rockefeller Center, their office complex that, for the Southeast. And they were, Rockefeller was the, uh, the oil baron. He was, had monopoly on the oil in this country for a while until they decided to break up his monopoly. That was their building and uh, it was a beautiful building. It was built out of limestone. Every, everything inside was high detail, nice quality. But it had been an office building for so long. Well, that was the biggest flip I ever did called the Standard Oil Building. Standard Oil Building. Now, they shortened it to the standard. And it's doing well. <laughs>